like to call this Freeburg Community High School uh, Board of Education meeting to order. Would you please call roll? Mr. Parrish? Here. Mrs. Staub? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Henning? Here. Mr. Haas? Here. Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Gauck? Here. Mr. Wilkerson? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, <clears throat> do we have any uh, agenda changes this evening? Uh, there are none. Okay, at this time we'll open up the floor for public comments. Do have any public comments this evening? Any online? Mr. Mr. Harris? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm Michelle Fathy. Um, I have uh, two students currently at the high school, a freshman and a junior. And the reason I wanted to come tonight is I just wanted to, um, I know that you'll be deciding probably once we get guidelines from ISBE about the fall um, school session, I would just wanted to um, give my hopes that the board is going to consider bringing the kids back five days a week. Um, I'm very fortunate my kids are, are, are doing well. I mean, it's not, they're not, they would rather obviously be in school more and I think they would do better. Um, but I know that there's a lot of kids that are really, really, really struggling um, going remote. And so I just want to um, express my concern and my feelings for, I know a lot of people that I've spoke to about the need to get back in school in the fall for five days a week. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? So I'll, I'll just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Um, I'm Tanya Smith. I do have a, a son here as well. Um, I have a daughter coming in next year. Um, I just would kind of like to reiterate what Michelle had to say on those comments. Um, my son's had a variety of challenges with the remote learning. Um, I am a little disappointed that the building plan can't be re reconstructed, that these children aren't going to be able to stay in school through May. Um, I think that they need it. There's more than just um, the academics, it's also the socialization that I've heard from other people um, that their children really need desperately. Um, so, you know, I just would reiterate what, what Michelle had to say. If there's nothing that can be changed on the building project, um, I would really just like to encourage you to consider um, how we can get these kids staying in the school and, um, you know, interacting with their kids in class um, so that they can get get the learning that they need and the socialization as well. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do you have any online? No. Okay. No. Seeing no more public comments, uh, we've all had a chance to look at the uh, consent agenda. Uh, do we have any additions? Uh, additions? Any corrections? If none, we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, Michael, make the move. Move motion. And Dean will second it. Okay. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Miller. Aye. Mr. Gaff. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Do we have any committee reports this evening? We do not. Now it's time for the student members report. Um, so what's been going on lately is uh, spring break is fast approaching and after that seniors are definitely all counting down the days till graduation. Um, the, as far as academics, the WISE team did compete and Mrs. Jung will give a more detailed rundown of that after me, but I'll keep it very general. Um, our team here won their sectional and beat other schools such as Columbia, Westman, and Modern Day and they're currently ranked sixth in the state. Um, I've talked to some of the people on the team and they're very hopeful that they can definitely place top five at state. And so they said they got a lot of practicing to do, but they think it's possible. Um, and then <clears throat> the community uh, students of FCHS and their parents are in fact, they did plan a senior prom at the Catholic Warvest on April 24th. 
Um, this is obviously separate from the school, and then there will also be a separate junior prom at a later date in May. Um, this is something I just wanted to, I'm sure you guys know this, but um, yeah, I wanted to make you guys aware in case you weren't. Um, as far as the athletics, uh, all indoor group and sport activities are currently practicing or competing as cases in the area have only continued to decrease some throughout the state. Um, while many sports have been playing, there are still a few who haven't officially began competing yet. Um, some of these include baseball, girls, soccer, softball, and track and field. And then I did actually have, I had an athlete approach me at FCHS. Um, he asked me to bring up a concern he has regarding the cost of attending FCHS sporting events. Um, in previous years, he stated that athletes in season would not have to pay to attend their friends' games in different sports. Uh, for example, someone in golf would not have to pay to attend a volleyball game. Um, and this student would just like to know why the policy changed this year and was wondering if the policy is specific to this year or will continue in future years and what was the reasoning behind that decision. Um, and then with performing arts, uh, band is currently practicing for their pep game on Saturday and they were also practicing before the graduation. Okay. Any questions or comments? Can we find out an answer on it? Greg, you want to it, let us know about that? It absolutely has to do with uh, the changes this year and the limits on who, I mean, how many people can be in. Um, you know, we have to account for all those people. So um, if we just let every student come in that was in season, we'd be over the limit. So mm -hmm. we set up a system where we had kids sign up. And, so that's why. It's, okay. it's completely because of the situation this year. Okay. So, so this it'll, it'll go back to the way it was next year. Okay, that's understandable. Before, I don't know what I'm saying. Thank you. And then Kayla, that's it up, so thank you. All right, let's move on to the principal's report. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, we are going to be having the um, honors celebration or the honors banquet that we've had in the past. Um, it is gonna be held on Sunday, May 2nd in the main gym. Um, we just had the National Honor Society um, induction ceremony yesterday and it was our first time doing it this way we were able to have it in the gym the kids were spread out six feet apart on the floor um, they each got two tickets for parents to come and view it um, it was the first time we'd set up the whole streaming cameras and everything else and I think that went over really well so people who couldn't come um, could watch it on the stream and it was recorded so they could watch it later on so kudos to Mr. Alt for getting that set up and um, Mr. Miller um, worked with the group and inducted 42 new members yesterday. So um, Evan was one of the speakers there as one of the officers and uh, it, it turned out to be a, the best it could be under the circumstances of what we've had and you know compared to the past and we're hopefully looking forward to having a more traditional ceremony in the future but I'm really proud of all those kids and, and the officers and, and Mr. Miller and it was a, it was a good event. So. Um, so that takes us to the honor celebration, which we're going to hold in the same format. Um, we'll probably have about 60 to 70 kids that are honored that night with the different awards. We're going to run it the same way. We're going to, um, they're going to get tickets for family and, and um, friends or grandparents to come, whoever's going to come to that. It's going to be at 6 o'clock in the evening on a Sunday evening. So trying to work around the um, unique sporting schedule that we're doing now. It, it's been very difficult, so we are gonna go ahead and host that on a Sunday night. Um, the PSAT 9 and PSAT 10, earlier, um, last month I think I told you the dates we were gonna hold that. The state has now come in and canceled the PSAT 9 and the PSAT 10. So students on those days, it was gonna be April 14th and the 21st. Um, those will return to regular remote days and students will have, you know, meet with their teachers and do virtual assignments. Um, however, the juniors will still be taking the, a the SAT on Tuesday, April 13th, okay? Um, all 9th, 10th, and 12th grade students would be checking in on their Google Classrooms this day. Um, there will be no virtual classes on April 13th, um, and the reason for that is because all the teachers will be proctoring the SAT test. The academic challenge team, um, Evan's already uh, talked about this. Congratulations to that team. Um, they're sponsored by Mr. Andy Morgan. Um, the academic challenge team participated in the sectional on Wednesday, March 3rd. Um, it's a different format this year as well. They take it in their home school. It's all on the computer. 
Um, the team finished first place and, and now they will participate as a whole team at the state competition in April. Super excited for them. Um, just to name off some of the scores, um, in physics, first place went to Elizabeth Proctor and second place to Josh Mers. Chemistry, first place, Allison Colvis and second place, Elizabeth Proctor. Biology, first place, Anna Murley. Math, first place, Josh Mers. Second place, Allison Colvis. Engineering Graphics, first place, Evan Saliner. Um, and as he mentioned, right now they got uh, Mr. Morgan received a copy of all the scores throughout the state. And just in the sectional, Freeburg had um, ranked sixth overall, which is really outstanding. And uh, we wish them the very best as they compete in state in April. So hopefully more good news to come there. Um, let's see. 300, the perfect game. Um, I want to say congratulations to Brandon Kinzel for bowling a perfect game on Thursday, March 11th at Bel Air Bowl. It was his last match of his senior year and scored a perfect game. So congratulations to Brandon. Um, girls bowling, congratulations to them. They placed fourth overall in the sectional. Lauren Hunter placed first overall individually, earning the girls Southern Shootout Champion medal. Um, the bowling team is coached by Craig Gilmore. And sectional was the final event for the bowling season. They did not do the final state series. A couple things that are not in your um, packet that came up after the, after the fact that these were put out. Um, we had some good news today about ISBE quarantine information. Um, they have removed the following symptoms from quarantine. Runny nose, congestion, upset stomach, which, you know, it is uh, coming up on allergy season, so I'm really thankful that we're not going to have to send kids home for those things. Um, all other symptoms do remain. For seniors, graduation items, Jostens will be at the high school on Monday, April 5th and Tuesday, April 6th. For seniors to pick up their caps and gowns, announcements, etc. So seniors will need to have all their balances paid in order to collect their items or pay their balances on that day. That's all I got. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, I do have one more thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Last minute. Hang in there. All right. um, as you can see, we've got some artwork up here from some of our art students. Um, the art department decided to put together what they're calling the FCHS Art Hop 2021. Since we haven't been able to have parents come in the building, we haven't been able to really display anything for people to see, they're taking the art show out to the community. Um, so Kruger Community High School um, is proud of the progress our students have been making these past months as we watch them overcome so many challenges and persist. We we'll believe that their hard work deserves to be recognized and rewarded. With the helpful, help of local businesses, the hardworking students, and the community at large, the art department has created an art hop event. Several local businesses will be displaying our students' artwork for the next few weeks. These students' persistence and dedication to their work should be recognized and appreciated. This event goes beyond honoring the students as it highlights the wonderful, hardworking businesses around us. Be sure to visit the following sites. Um, Sophia Beal will have art posted at Winneman's Meat Market in St. Lavore. Nat Weber uh, will have art at the Coffee Mill Diner, and that's in Smithton, I believe. I haven't been there yet. Um, Haley Perdue will also have artwork at the Coffee Mill Diner. Justice Dickey at Country Mart. Shelby Hansen at Country Mart. Emma Heap at Country Mart. Miranda Cunningham at Country Mart. Riley Thompson at Rice Schneiders. Um, the easels displaying the artwork tonight were purchased with a grant from the Fruitburg Foundation. Some of the art at the board meeting will also be added to the businesses after tonight. Additional businesses will be displaying art week, artwork throughout the near future. So, really great. So hopefully you'll get out and about and you'll be able to see some of um, some of what our students have been doing. Nice. Sir. Now I'm done. Okay. Thanks. Any, <laughs> any questions for Joe? All right. We'll move on to the uh, superintendent's report. All right. Uh, we did uh, get word that the uh, ESSER funds, uh, this is kind of like the second round of COVID, relief for schools uh, has come through. Freeburg will get about 162000 extra dollars next year for that. Uh, we'll be able to use those things for basically anything that's considered COVID uh, related. Um, so we're, we've got some plans for some uh, uh, summer school, uh, some things next year that I'm going to talk to the board about later uh, that we can use those funds for. Uh, legislative update, uh, a whole slew of laws were put into um, uh, law put into action uh, recently by the governor 
Uh, there are several changes for the school curriculum requirements. Um, there are some substan sub substantial things that we'll have to deal with. Uh, the good thing is they don't go into effect for the next couple of years. Uh, some of them include things like two years of a language, uh, two years of a, uh, a lab science. And uh, so it's, it's concerning for especially some of our resource students that, you know, before we, until we get uh, uh, clarification on whether or not, you know, students like that are going to have those requirements. Uh, but there will be some changes. Uh, there's, there's also some computer literacy uh, requirements that are in there. So uh, some of that is, is a positive, but some of those are a little concerning. So hopefully we'll get some clarification as we move forward. Uh, consolidated elections coming up on April 6th. Um, the canvassing has to be finished by April 27th. So uh, to seat our new board, we have to, a timeline to seat the board so we don't have enough time to wait until the May meeting. Uh, there's, there, the canvassing will still be going on by the April meeting, so there's a need to have a special meeting. Um, I've tentatively have set that for Wednesday, April 28th, so hopefully everybody can make that meeting. If you recall at that meeting, what we'll do is we'll seat the board, uh, elect officers, and then you typically approve the board meetings for the, the coming months, or uh, the coming year. And then also remind board members, uh, that you should be getting your statement of economic interests in the mail, uh, and those are due by May 1st. Uh, there was also revisions to the health uh, guidelines by the IDPH. Uh, they, they made some adjustments. Jill talked uh, about a couple, uh, but there's nothing in there that really was uh, uh, substance enough that would cause us to make any changes what we're doing this year. Uh, there's also been revisions to the IHSA outdoor sports. So I've been posting out about that. So we are able to actually uh, permit 500 fans um, into the outdoor sports. Um, it really only comes into play for varsity football. So what we did is we started selling, pre-selling those tickets, and those are going fairly well. We're actually going to open those up uh, tomorrow to um, the, the public, uh, where they can actually buy up to five tickets. So. Uh, there's still tickets available if anybody's listening and wants to buy tickets. Uh, one of the nice things that the conference did do, though, is they uh, decided that they were going to allow 100 away fans to the varsity football game. So that allowed the, the families to come and see the kids. And that's one of the big pushes that we've had through all this is to try to get the families to be able to come and see uh, these events. And I think that's all I have. Okay. Any questions or comments? So none. We'll move on to old business. Uh, first item is consider approving the levy confirmation report. This is the report we get from the county clerk that uh, uh, clarifies the levy that we uh, passed in December. Um, I will tell you that the levy that they, they are putting out is exactly the same numbers that we put in, in uh, December, except for the bond and interest payment will actually be uh, about $2,500 uh, lower, and that's because the uh, bond sale that happened in January, we actually did better on the bond sale than we anticipated, so the, the, uh, the repayment is gonna be lower. So I'm asking the, uh, uh, unless the board has the objections, I'm gonna sign off on that, we'll send that off tomorrow. That is something that the superintendent does sign off on. Uh, so the, there is no action the board needs to take, but if anybody had any questions on that, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Any questions? I'm good with it, Doug. Okay. Let's move on to the next item. Okay. Um, I know this was mentioned in public comments. Um, we are starting to look at next year. Um, obviously, we plan quite a bit ahead. Um, it is our, our plan, or our, I shouldn't say our plan, because that's something I'm asking the board to um, allow us to do, is to put that committee together. Uh, but it is my goal to have uh, five day a week, uh, full days of school next year to start off in August. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're at a point where we've got the vaccinations, uh, the herd immunity or whatever terms you want to use and, and we feel safe. I do anticipate that, that masks will still be mandated next year. I just don't see where that's not going to be. Um, we, we are not probably going to get the final set of guidelines until hopefully we get them by the end of the year. I would like to have a plan given to the board before the teachers leave for the summer. 
So my hope is to get something put together and have it ready for May. Um, but again, the idea that you know next year is going to look as normal as possible. And I think every indication is, is that we're going to be able to do that. So um, that's what we're shooting for. Uh, but just, I, I want to put that committee together because there's some other things that we have to work through, um, just like we did with the, the two different times we met this year. So again, no formal action needs to be taken. Um, I don't know if any board members had comments about kind of seeing in the future six months, but I want to kind of give you an idea of the direction we were headed. Any comments? I think we definitely want to get the kids back. Um, five days a week if at all possible and we'll just have to see how things pan out this summer. Uh, I'm sad to think that you're probably right with the masks, but we'll just, we just have to wait and see. Because yep. right now it's just a little bit too early, we don't have a crystal ball. Let's move on to new business. Um, uh, Mrs. Ingalls and the FFA have, have approached me about a SAE project, that's a Supervised Agricultural Experience Project. Uh, these are the projects that the kids take on uh, they, they work through these projects all year long, and then some of them actually take these on to the state and, and work on state degrees. Um, one of our students wants to, they, they kind of toss around a, a couple ideas. Uh, one of the ideas was kind of twofold. One was to uh, find a place on the uh, campus where they can have a project, where they can plant something. Uh, the other was to pay, um, you know, kind of honor longtime FFA supporter Sandy Craig. And I know Larry, your husband's in the, the audience tonight. Um, Sandy passed away uh, suddenly not too long ago and was a great loss to the FFA and uh, Freeburg High School. The idea is to uh, take the berm, which is, you know, something that we've struggled to, to kind of keep that in shape, and then have a student each year. Uh, or possibly multiple years because these projects can last more than one year, take that on and, and basically they're going to landscape it and they're going to keep, you know, uh, uh, keep it up to date and, and keep it in good shape. Right now they're looking at a rose garden and so what they're going to do is they're going to keep most of the, the big plants that are in there, the bushes and the trees, but there's a lot of the flowers and, and other things that have started to grow so they want to clear that out. They also have funding um, I know that uh, I think the, the crafts have uh, have received some memorials. They're going to we talked about donating. FFA alumni and FFA are also going to use money. I did tell Mrs. Ingalls that I would be happy to have the school cover the cost of the mulch. I don't know what that's going to be, but I anticipate it's only going to be several hundred dollars. I don't think it's going to be a huge amount, but it, it, I think it's a it's a nice uh, uh, a nice idea to pay uh, to honor uh, Mrs. Craft. Uh, but to also give these kids a project, and this is a project that once the person that starts it, they're done, the next, another student can take it over. So it's really kind of, it, it solves a little bit of a problem for us, but it also is going to be a really nice, uh, uh, a beautiful spot um, for, for the campus and, and uh, for people to come by and, and see it. So I'd like the board to approve that if you would. Greg, yes. this is Mike. I'll cover the mulch. Just let me know what it is. Okay. Any, any questions you. or comments on this? Seeing none, we need a motion to move to approve the SAE FFA project as presented. So moved. I'll Second. make that motion. <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let Gary make the motion. And we'll let Dennis second it. Vicki, we'll let you do the next one. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Stab? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Motion passes. Next item. Uh, this is the first reading of the proposed changes to the uh, parent student handbook for the 2020-2022 school year. Uh, Mrs. Crunk is going to go through those for you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first one, um, the first recommendation is a health requirement. And the only thing that changed on that is um, proof of dental um, examination performed by a licensed dentist is just for ninth grade students only. So um, that's the only thing that's changed in that. Um, let's see, recommendation number two. Um, this is new. It's, um, I think you guys talked a little bit about it at the last board meeting. It's Students Online Personal Protection Act. 
This come down from the Illinois uh, Principal Association. They have a model handbook, and this is the language that they want us or recommend us to put in our handbook. I think it's important. It just helps protect our students and their um, information. So, and I think Mr. Alt's working on that right now to make sure everything's safe with that. So that's just the language. It's quite a bit. So, um, then we got number three, the Iron Midget Award. We've already decided to um, remove that award, so I'm just taking it out of the handbook. And then number five, um, infractions. Um, wait, did I stop? Oh, oh, sorry, this one. Number four, code of conduct. Okay, so this is some new language. We have this in our handbook, um, but the, like I said, the model handbook had the wording I felt like was a little bit better, but the new one, part of this is during periods of remote learning. So any consequences or infractions against the code of conduct also now includes remote learning. Hopefully we won't have to use that after this, but this is a recommendation from the Illinois handbook to put that in there. So basically I cleaned that language up and move that under code of conduct because it was in, if you look at recommendation number five, um, it was actually, the information was in there except for didn't have remote learning and the wording just a little bit different. So like I said, I cleaned that up, put that under code of conduct, and then that takes us into number five, infractions and consequences. You can see I um, put a line through that information and just clean that up. So that's now gonna be under infractions and consequences. And then um, dress code, this is new. This actually came from the um, committee that we put together with parents and students. And one of the things that they want to be allowed to do is wear um, spaghetti strap tops and tank tops. Um, I will tell you that they voted on it, majority won, so that's why I'm bringing it to you. I do not think it's a good idea that, to have that dress code here at the high school. That's just me. Um, but that's something, and I voice my opinion, um, but again, you know, we have a committee for a reason, and so I want to bring that to the board, and you guys can ultimately make that decision. And then number seven, um, sexting. Uh, Ms. Jung and I worked on, you know, you have situations that come, out throughout, through, come up throughout the year, and we needed to clean up some language in this area and add some more information, especially now that kids have their Chromebooks, um, they take those home, and the way that it was worded was it said school property, but it made it sound like on physically on school property. So we just changed the language so that way students understood that their Chromebook is school property. So anything that's inappropriate on there could possibly come up to discipline consequences. So uh, number recommendation, recommendation number eight, computing device procedures. Um, this is some new language from Mr. Alt um, that he just wanted to clean up. Um, Mr. Alt wanted to update this information based on situations that have come up in his office. The school used to cover one screen, but it was getting abused so badly that the school was replacing anywhere from 75 to 100 screens a year at $40 a screen. So um, he cleaned up that language, and then that takes us into recommendation number nine, which is the new language. Um, in the event that device needs repair due to student negligence as determined in item F, fees may be incurred up to the entire cost of replacement of the device. If it cannot be repaired, cost to repair items due to student negligence are listed below. Um, one of the changes was a loss damage charger went from 30 to 35 dollars and a new one is damage loss case um, that is now 35 and then to replace the entire Chromebook it's 250 dollars. Um, over the last several years the cost to repair um, devices have been analyzed and determined that over 75 percent of damage that the district was covering was due to student negligence and not normal device wear and tear. Um, the modification suggests it removes the school pain for all damage, irregardless of how it happened, and placing the cost of repair due to student negligence on the students themselves. The school will still continue to repair replace any device due to normal wear and tear. Um, the schedule to repair replace included is based on current cost of available parts, and this um, portion could be adjusted on a year-to-year -year basis, depending on, you know, and I think the kids got new Chromebooks and stuff, so obviously that's going to make, you know, a $5 adjustment probably in the price. So. Um, number 10 is extracurricular code of conduct. Um, new language, it's no longer the WISE team, it's now called Academic Challenge. Um, Eastern took over for um, U of I, and so they changed the name to Academic Challenge. So that's just a change in the handbook to change the name. Uh, recommendation number 11, um, this information was updated um, through the guidance office, and basically it just says, um, SDHS currently offers SWIG dual enrollment courses in statistics, welding one, welding two, and manufacturing. And then recommendation number 12, college entrance exams. Um, that language was taken out um, because there's no, their college board is no longer offering subject tests. So you can see where I just marked that out. 
and the new language will um, look like that at the bottom. Uh, recommendation number 13, standardized assessment program. Um, you can see I took out F, which is the SAT subject test. And um, the reason for that is, again, there's no SAT subject test anymore. And you can just see where I changed the lettering just to make sure it's accurate in the handbook. Recommendation number 14, clubs, organizations, activities. Um, we started a new group this year called No Place for Hate. Um, so that will be placed in the handbook, option to be approved. Um, recommendation number 15, um, Saturday Scholars. We've been doing that for a long time, but just for some reason it wasn't in the handbook. So um, we've added that. And then um, number 16, new language for the academic challenge. Um, Mr. Morgan gave me a description of how he would like that to go in the handbook. And then recommendation number 17, school operations during a pandemic or other health emergency. Um, this is something, again, that the Illinois Principal Association uh, Model Student Handbook added in July of 2020. Um, this will keep our handbook up to date and legally compliant. And then I just put the information, um, just a note to you guys. It's not a, a necessarily a change in the handbook, but somehow um, when we talked about schedule changes, uh, Ms. Minor noticed in the handbook that it was it was correct, but then this last year it reverted back to the way it used to be. I'm not sure because you know we use we use school date books a lot, so I'm not sure when it got sent to them. It just something happened. I'm not really sure. We didn't catch it. Um, so basically, this is just this is what we've been practicing, and for whatever reason, in this handbook, it got switched back to the old way. So that's about it. I always think there's not going to be that much stuff, and then I start <coughs> writing it all down, and it's, it seems like a lot. So the panel of students and parents have went through all those with you? No, no, some of this stuff is not a handbook. I'll say some of it. Yeah, no, it's okay. just basically for that, no, these are things that are, are sent down from the Illinois Principal Association handbook. So some of this stuff is not up for, like, for their discussion. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any questions or concerns or comments? Just on the dress code issue that you, that you mentioned, I noticed that it, uh, it it saved or kept the covered from the shoulders to to the mid thighs. That's in the new language. And what was the? Did you just pull uh, the wording that specifically? No, um, I, the part that they're wanting is the spaghetti strap tops and the tank tops. Okay, where is that at? Um, it should be if you look at recommendation number six under dress code. Yes. So obviously, if they have to be covered from shoulders to mid thigh, once if you approve the spaghetti strap tops and the tank top, obviously that wording will have to be adjusted. Okay, uh, so I was going to say why don't we uh, approve it, provided that the shoulders and uh, to the mid thighs are covered, if they want to wear a top with the spaghetti. But that wouldn't cover their shoulder. Well, then that particular piece <laughs> that's, of apparel that's the point, yeah. wouldn't wouldn't qualify. <clears throat> okay. So the language needs to stay in place is what you're saying then. Like, I'm saying students are to be covered from the shoulders to the mid thighs. If they want to have spaghetti straps on something that covers their shoulders, then they're more than welcome to. You mean they want to I was going to say that's kind of the movement? Is that what you're saying? No. Uh, I mean, if they want to put straps, I'm being facetious, okay. obviously. Just making uh, sure. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, Just it's, it's pretty... The new language still has covered from the shoulders to mid thighs, and I'm in favor of that. I disagree. Um, and I was on the committee, and, and, and it came from the kids. I, I didn't bring it up, but <coughs> I disagree. Our uniforms are tank tops. And yeah, they don't have spaghetti straps, but cross country, um, basketball, they all, they're all tank tops. Are we going to start changing our uniforms? Because that doesn't, it doesn't follow our own guidelines. So by that. Spaghetti straps, I'm not big on the spaghetti straps, but tank tops, I don't, and, and the off the shoulder kind of like, cut the cold shoulder, I see nothing in, inappropriate with that at all, as long as their undergarments aren't showing. But the, the problem is that is the, um, is, is the discipline is, is, is being consistent in carrying out the rules because, the, you know, it used to be, Kids thought there was a two finger, a three finger rule, and it was no, that's not. It's what exactly what it says in the handbook: uh, cover from the shoulder to the mid thigh. I'm concerned, and I, I you know, I, I don't agree. I, I, don't, I think we should keep the language that's in there. Uh, I think if we go to 
Um, any kind of top, I don't care how revealing it is or isn't, um, it all, it's just going to be problematic trying to enforce the rule. And um, it, what we have is working. Um, the, whole, the whole idea of, of the sports, uh, and that's, it's just a completely different ball game. No, and the only one that's, it's just basketball and volleyball that have that. Softball and I guess track. Volleyball really doesn't have, they have sleeves. Right. Um, you know, cross country runs in sports bras half the time. Well, they couldn't do that in school. Well, I, you know, so, so. Still school sponsored event. All sure. And, you know, uh, we, we kind of treat those separate. But the, the idea of trying to manage that at school is going to be very problematic. Because you're going to have kids that are going to push the boundaries. They push the boundaries already. Um, I think if we open it up and allow that, they can wear that all, all they want at home, at the mall in the summer. That's great. It's, I just don't think it's school appropriate. And that's my thoughts on it. It's going to be inherently difficult for the administrators to keep up with somebody's interpretation if you lessen the, uh, lessen the standard. Um, the length of the shorts, the, uh, the spaghetti straps, uh, particularly on our, our females, but also on shorts on, uh, on the males or anything. There comes a point when it, it becomes distracting in, uh, and shorter is cooler. So it's, I, I think it should stay like it is. Okay, so would you like to make a motion to move to approve the first reading of the changes for 2021-2022 student handbook uh, with the dress code remaining the same as what it was? Or is that the way we should word that? That would, that, I think that's what he's saying. Motion? Well, if, if I can uh, change the motion to read, to approve the first reading of the uh, 21, uh, 22 dress code, or excuse me, student hand, handbook, with the exception that the dress code remains as, okay. uh, as it has previously been. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Sorry. Second. Okay. We'll give it to Dean. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Stab? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Duck? Aye. Okay, motion period. Uh, at this time, we'll move on. Do we have any board correspondence? I would do. We have a, a thank you note uh, from the family of uh, Walter Ensley. Walter was a long time uh, head custodian here, and he passed away recently. We sent them a little. Yep. Yep. Uh, do we have any agenda items this evening? Oh, we do not. Do we have a reason to go into closed sessions? Uh, we do uh, for personnel and student discipline. We need a motion to move into closed session. So moved. We have a motion. We have a second. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staff? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Yeah. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Motion passes. We're now going into closed sessions. Thank you all for attending this evening. Hey, Greg. Do we have any action items? Yes. Uh, move to approve the resolution authorizing notice for remedial warning for Mr. Terrence Hoover as presented. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Mr. Reynolds? Thumbs up. Give you a thumbs up. Mr. Henning? Yep. Yeah. Mr. Haas? Uh, yes. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. Motion passes. Apparently they can hear, but they can't speak. Okay. Um, move to approve the new assistant principal contract for Mrs. Uh, Miss Lori Crunk as presented. So moved. Second. Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. Mr. Henning? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. Motion passes. Move to approve the preceding list of volunteer coaches as presented. 
Move. Second. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Yep. Mr. Henning? Yep. Mr. Haas? Aye. Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gopp? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. What? Did you what? <laughs> Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Mr. Henning? Yep. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. Motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Make sure we get that.